Sensor scan to one half parsec. On screen. Weapons are at It's more like a big ball of wibbly wobbly, tiny whiny stuff. Open a channel. All vipers, break, break, break! Impossible to see the future. This is the emergency holographic doctor speaking. You wish the energy talking. Helmsman laid a new course. Watch how I saw it. Now, it's gone completely. Engage. Hello, and welcome to the Save Sci-Fi Podcast. I am your host, David, and this is episode 51. We are exactly one episode away for doing this for an entire year. Ugh, a year of the Ooh. worst sci-fi podcast ever. It's not that bad. Yes, it is. We all know it is. Anyway, so <laughs> joining me we have Amy. Hey, all and we have the infamously missing Stuart, the news guy. See, he's missing. I thought that'd be Hawk. Yeah, no, he's just, Hawk is sort of... Working. Yeah, he's got a job, so sucks to be him. Anyway, um, on tonight's podcast, we have Return of the Shows. Effectively, all of the big shows are back, and we're going to be looking at them, and... Having a listen and seeing what we see. And I have no idea what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, the, so the big shows are back. You've got Doctor Who's back, Arrow, Flash, Gotham, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. We've got a new one, Minority Report. Um, I know I'm forgetting something else. Yep. Um, Arrow, S.H.I.E.L.D., Minority Heroes Reborn. Heroes Reborn. I, how did I forget Heroes Reborn? <laughs> oh, well. That's the whole reason I've got Amy here, to make sure that I don't forget random stuff. So, anyway, hopefully Stuart will join us. Eventually. <laughs> he was here a minute ago. Yeah, and then he just up and disappeared. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, let's start off with Minority Report, just because it's at the top of the list and whatever. Um... Now, Minority Report's based off a similar scenario as the Minority Report movies, but set after the Minority Report movies, um, where the kids that were used originally to um, foretell crime have now sort of on the run because foretelling crime has been banned. And it sort of follows one of the kids that was used um, and his... and him trying to work with the police to solve crimes and stuff. It's really weird. To be honest, it didn't really grab me. It's pretty boring. It sort of dragged quite a lot. It sort of reminded me of humans, where it was one of those interesting concepts that they just seemed to... Kill. Yeah. Swing and a miss. Swing and a miss. Um, then... Don't worry, I am actually here, folks. Oh, God, he's back. Finally. <laughs> Finally back. Uh, very sad. My, gra- my grandma called. Aw. Pom pom Mima. <laughs> Can't say no to Mima. No. So, yeah. Anyway, um, just talking about Minority Report. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much what I said. Uh, it's boring. <laughs> yeah. Why? It's, it's... We'll have to wait and see if it goes any better. Yeah, uh, I'll force uh, myself to watch season one like I did with humans, but I, I really don't expect much from it. The, the, no. The, the, the pilot set the bar so, on such an average level. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, next up, we have Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Yay! So... Something I've watched. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, right. liked how, I liked how it started, actually. Yeah, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, Shield started off good, and the the second episode sort of built on that. But yeah. Unfortunately for me, it f- what it, it didn't need to start off good. It needed to start off great. It needed to start it off really, really strong. No, just a person running around melting things. And for me, it it, it really didn't. It started <laughs> sort of fairly average, and mm. it just I hate to be the guy that does the podcast and it's like everything was crap, but. Everything Agents of, was... Agents of Shield. It had the potential to be so much better when it came back. 
I love the um um Daisy's outfit. Oh yeah, that's pretty cool. The gloves and cool. Also, I called the fact that the monolith transported uh the chick. Yeah. I I called that. I was like back when we did the ending season the, the um the end of season two Agents of Shields, like it's teleported somewhere. Oh Finished. look, I was right. Oh yeah. Well they're not just gonna kill her off. Admittedly the way they brought it back was pretty cool too. Yeah. I yeah. I saw a photo of Simmons. Yeah. She's covered in alien dust. Yeah. There they are. Yeah. Yeah. Um, put it this way. The... They, in order to open the portal in... Well, turn the solid object into a liquid object so that they can go through and use the portal Stargate black thing, um, you need to resonate the right sound frequency, which was pretty cool. Um... So yeah, yeah. That was, what that Simmons yell, uh, Fitz yelling at it? Yeah, that was pretty funny. <laughs> Why won't you open? And then he finds random sand, and he's like, "It's a portal." <laughs> so yeah, um, and they got the Asgardian comes back in episode two, and yeah, um, that was cool. The dude from Numbers, whose name I can never remember. Yeah, <laughs> known as the dude from Numbers. Yeah. It's just it's just like in Flash the um Captain Cold and Heatwave are the Prison Break brothers. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, um What else we got? Gotham. We'll, we'll move on. We'll we'll start oh, with the superhero thing we'll go to Gotham. God, I loved God, I love the, the first few episodes. You did? Yes. I loved I loved the whole Jer- I love oh, the, 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 the Jerome. Jerome. The Jerome, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Credit where credit's due, that was done brilliantly. It, seriously, that actor is absolutely amazing. He has done the research on on oh, yeah. on and like of all the previous shows. Like I can see I can see he's got like the hammer laugh, but he's got the craziness of um of Heath Ledger's, like, it's really, really well done. Yeah, yeah. Credit where credit's due. He's, um... Well, technically, he's not Joker. No, no, no. I, I like the idea that it's not what that it's not one person, but it's sort of an idea. Yeah, and, um... I think that is a ridiculously spectacularly awesome backstory for Joker. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, that said, that... Just, as I said, the actor... Should just win awards. Yeah. She just... They should just pile the awards high and just say, here, have all of them. It's like, why am I getting best news as a songwriter? Because reasons, take it, did you win them all? <laughs> I I, yeah. I hope he does come back it's some other time in a Batman franchise as a Joker, whether it be animated or something else. Yeah, he, but to be honest, there's very few people that do the Joker well, with the exception of Heath, obviously. The Joker is hard to do. It is an extremely hard role. It's ridiculously hard to get the Joker right. And he, I thought, had it spot on as a young Joker. (laughs) And we would like to welcome Grin to the studio audience. We will be keeping an eye on the chat. So any comments, feel free to... Feel free to throw them our way. Wow, me, me English good. (laughs) (laughs) Your brain's already gone. Yeah, it's been a very long week. Um... Uh, moving along to... We'll go with Flash. Flash, well, I think, had a fairly decent start. Um, trying to not be the Flash. Doesn't yeah. quite work. Yeah, it's better than... Um, it than the be- arrow not being the arrow. Yeah, he... F- hello, KV. Hello, Dragon. <laughs> um, had a better start than Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and substantially better than Minority Reports of Return of Flash and Arrow. I don't think I, that's I, hard. I actually have to admit, I thought I seriously thought after the opening scene of Flash we were just going to be stuck in Earth 2. Yeah. And it's like, oh, no, we're not. Why did you get me excited? <laughs> no. It was it was pretty cool, though. Like, the way fi- like, that scene with Firestorm was supposedly meant to happen at the end of last season. Yeah. But it was, it was just ran a little bit too long, so they cut it and they put it at the start of this season instead, which is really yeah, it was, cool. It was, uh, it was, and it's interesting because there's a couple of um, news tidbits I'll go into later with Firestorm. Yeah. So yeah, um, and arrows also came back. Wow, we're flying through this. We. we... <laughs> wow. Well, there's not much we can say without spoiling a lot of it. Yeah, we'll get to yeah. the spoilery part later. 
Um, have I we? Gotta, gotta um, say after. Are we, are we going to talk about The Martian today? Um, I don't know. I don't know if the others have seen it. I've seen it. Have you guys? No, seen sorry, it? I've been too busy with family stuff. Yeah, that's understandable. Lately. <laughs> Um, so yeah, no, we'll, 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 cover that, we'll cover weekend. that down the road. It's only just come out over here, Grin, so, um, yeah. We'll probably cover that, might cover that next week. Speaking of which, um, tomorrow's podcast is going to be a fantasy-themed one, and it's called Michael Will Hate This. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I... It's, it's, it, we're doing it as a one-year anniversary, doing a non-sci-fi sci-fi podcast, just because that sounds t- hilarious to me, so... So, yeah. And the week after that is Back to the Future. So, we have to do Which it. Which one? The second one, of course, because that's next. That's the one that's the references. Exactly. In exactly two weeks, it's when Marty McFly is meant to turn up. So, Hasbro, seriously, get cracking with the hoverboards. You've got two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, after watching Arrow, Diggle's yeah. helmet isn't as stupid looking as I thought. Yeah, he's it, it, Diggle's helmet still reminds me a lot of Magneto, Magneto and Judge Dredd. It has. It also reminds me a lot of um Guardian as well. Yeah. I think that's probably what they're leaning towards. Yeah. Guardian. Yeah. Do yeah. I need to explain what Guardian is, or? Yeah, go for it. All right. So, um, Guardian um is well when I first came in the Guardians watching Young Justice, actually, so... But he was a protector of Earth that had um, a, a similar helmet to Diggle's, but it was gold, and also an armor piece and a chest piece. Okay. Yeah. So it reminds... I wonder if they're talking a little bit of inspiration from that. Um, have you guys seen The End of Continuum yet? No. No. Uh, oh, no, 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 no. You guys suck. Well, I don't um, look a lot. Of, <laughs> I, have... I don't look at a lot of shows online. <laughs> up with it, I don't look at like... things online either because I watch them all on the TV. A hundred percent legit. 100%. Fine, you got them from the internet. No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> lies, lies, and blasphemy. me. I don't go. To, I don't, I'm not going to jail for her confessing for me. No, no, she does nothing. <laughs> She knows nothing. This is not on the record. <laughs> Get him, Turnbull. <laughs> anyway, um, so what's left? We've we've covered. Okay, let's move on to the spoilery stuff. We'll figure we've given enough for our for spoiler-free reviews. Um, let's start back at the beginning. Minority Report. Actually, uh... I forgot to mention Heroes. I oh, will get to heroes. <laughs> okay. Heroes was heroes liking liking his um heroes. Yeah, heroes reborn definitely looks interesting. Um, I'm very very curious to see where it's going to go, and who the else they're going to bring back. I actually didn't watch the first one. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. um, yeah, Paul Green, all the shows over there. Are, take forever, because they've got to translate them before they put them on in Japan. Until then, he gets to watch all those incredibly <laughs> um, interesting, it's not quite the right word, shows that they have over there. Well, to be fair, they have Boruto before us, so... Yeah, that okay, fair, fair point. I, I hate them for that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, move on to the spoilery stuff, and we'll get to Doctor Who right at the end. So, leaving Doctor Who till last, but we're definitely going to cover it. Because it'll take forever? Oh, yeah, that's what yeah, I'm Yeah, there's of... a lot. Yeah. So, let's see. Minority Report. Basic premise. The kids from that had the ability to predict into the future became outlawed, and they escaped to the country somewhere, and then the youngest of the two brothers disappeared um, to sort of escape, and now he's helping the police. Sort of like a hundred different other sort of copy-type shows. I've only seen episode one, so I don't know what happens after that. Um, but yeah, yeah, I've only seen episode one as well. Yeah, it, was, it seemed like it was setting itself up sort of like Continuum and The Listener yeah. and Castle and all of those sort of random expert helps cop do the cop's job better type show. Medium, yeah. Yeah, that sort of thing. Um, so, it's, I'm definitely curious to see Rick goes, but yeah. Yeah, uh, it's, uh, I'm not 
thrilled on it. Yeah. It's it hasn't really grabbed me as a show yet. I I, I hope it I hope it does an episode was like oh okay now you've got my attention. Yeah. Well, see, and the reason I want to just drill home Minority Report is because it was just it's one of those ideas like humans with such a large amount of raw potential as a concept and to miss that potential by as much as they did felt really really weird I'm not sure it sort of felt like that how do I put it it felt, it felt like they dropped the bar well, a not, lot. not that it felt like it was half of an idea and half of the idea hasn't been sort of reached yet like the raw potential in the concept is ridiculously high and the amount they've tapped into is ridiculously small and as a result it comes across as unfinished would be sort of yeah um like it's missing something that wouldn't be hard some so, days so um now heroes reborn i want to do a, i want to do a bit of a talk about heroes reborn Oh, yes. Because Heroes, Re- Heroes Reborn, we've been waiting a long time for a new hero series to come back. And the first thing we learn about what happens when Heroes Reborn comes back is Claire, the immortal girl, is dead. <laughs> yes, they finally found a way to kill her off. Noah's um, mind has been had his memory wiped. And there's a random conspiracy nut, no better description available. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's about right. Yeah. Um, who hunts him down and tries to get him to help break into a new company that's taken over the role of what the old company is doing and has been catching all the different, um, what do they call them, evolved? Yeah, evolved. Yeah, they, to be perfectly honest, we've got mutants, we've got inhumans, we've got, it's just like, come on guys, just stop copywriting generic words so everybody can use them. <laughs> <laughs> I like, um, I think the funniest moment for um, episode one, Leroy Jenkins! <laughs> I was I he- not expecting that. <laughs> I hear all. that way too often. I was so not expecting that. That was so funny. That was hilarious. Um, so what about the new abilities we've seen? We've, uh, we've got uh, a chick that reminds me of um, Shikamaru. Not Sh- yeah, Shikamaru from Naruto. C- can can manipulate shadows? That's not... No, yeah, that's Shikamaru. Right. That's yeah, Shikamaru. Sh- Shikamaru. Shikamaru. I always get the name wrong. Um, yeah, can manipulate light and shadows, which is really, really, really cool. The um, the chick with the sword reminds you um a lot of um Code Lyoko. Yeah. yeah. Which is really cool because I really like Code Lyoko in the past. So draws a sword, teleports into a video game. Game. Who doesn't want to be able to do that? I would. Like, I, would just, a, I would just live like in Ark if I could do that. I'd just be like. <laughs> I'm in Ark! Woohoo! No, you... Dinosaurs! Oh god! Dying! Back in the hospital! Oh god! <laughs> yeah, you get eaten very often! Yeah, I would, I would die quite quickly. But totally worth it. I think my favourite definitely has to be the um the kid. The boy with teleports. Yeah, the, the teleport ability reminded me a lot of Kakeshi's ability from Naruto. He even had a similar sort of type effect yeah, to the yeah, teleport. Yeah, the, um, the mangekia. Yeah, the... the the Maki Ginko Schling gun thing that he does. Yeah. Yeah. Kumi. Kumi. Yeah. Um, yeah. And which was pretty cool. It's sort of, he can teleport anything he wants to wherever he wants it to go. Um, but at the very beginning, he just assumed it disappeared. And it wasn't until he met random girl, um, cheerleader girl person. I wonder if she's like meant to be like a replacement for Claire as the cheerleader. Yeah. It seems like there's two, there's, there's him and her as a sort of a, the budding love story. There's the sword chick and effectively the replacement of the hero ta- of hero, the time travel guy and his buddy. Um, is a, a chick that can teleport into video games and a hardcore gamer guy, who's both names I can't think of for whatever reason. <laughs> well, I, I believe they just refer to her as sword girl half the time. So yeah, katana girl. Yeah, Katana Girl, that's it, yeah. yeah, so... Yeah, we'll go with Katana Girl. And they've got a weird sort of... He was trying to hit on her, and she's just so oblivious. Yeah. <laughs> Senpai, notice me. No. Pretty much, yeah. 
Um, so, yeah, and so they've got a weird dynamic. Then you've got the... The Noah, two bad guys. you got, um... Oh, you got um, the two bad guys. Zachary Levi's character. Yeah. Um, so their kid was killed by Noah at some point back in the day. Yeah. So which... they're going on a sort of a revenge hunting trip around the, the states, killing off all the different Evos they can find. Um... Then you've got the chick that can manipulate lighters now at the North Pole or South Pole. Or... I think she's yeah, in Canada, so I'm going with North Pole. Some Somewhere... Uh, it has to be North, because it seems... Well, actually, you can't tell, really. Yeah. As soon as she just controls lights, you can't really say it to the yeah. Aurora Borealis. Yeah, but I'm going with North, because I mentioned Canada in the most recent episode. Yeah. Um, and so she's up there, and she's using her ability to prevent more sort of prevent the release of some weird energy that you it looks of... it looks like a really bizarre black hole yeah it's really actually weird. you know what, you know what really reminds me of the, this, the... i'm going a little old school with this it reminds you of the dead zone yeah. from dragon ball z yeah what if with, re- with garlic jr and stuff what it reminds me of is the the eclipse from the original series that too um, I think that's what they're trying to. Le- I think yeah. that's what they're trying to lead it towards. And they're sort of. She's sort of trying to contain this light energy stuff, which gives other people abilities. And every now and again, it gets past her and leaks out, and more sort of ability, uh, more people develop abilities. Yeah. Which resulted in the dude from the um, the hunting party that are killing off the evolved, gaining the ability to catch things on fire, <laughs> set things on fire randomly. Um, so yeah. So, at which point the wife spazzes out because they're on this whole mission to wipe out all the evolved, and then she realizes he's evolved, and she looks at him and goes, I really loved you, you know, and then just storms off. Jumps well, the car and storms off. And he's just like, Bleh. So, yeah. I didn't want to get evolved. Too yeah. bad. Pretty much, <laughs> yeah. So, it's the whole kill off all the evolved. Oh, no, you're evolved. Oh, well, if I stay, I'm going to have to kill you, type thing. Also, um, the most scariest thing was um uh what was it um um what they pl- plugged molly into oh that company yeah that thing was freaky that were effectively there's one of the company that it's like it's like um cerebro yeah it's effectively the company that noah used to work for back in the day that used to sort of hunt and track the different people with abilities but is now been taken over by another group primer corp or something Primatech. Primatech. Primus something. Primatech. And they're now finding a way of effectively digitally siloing all their abilities. So they're going through and sort of manipulating all the different abilities and trying to replicate them digitally. And they got Molly, the the girl that could sense any hero anywhere on the planet, and hooked her up into a Cerebro-type device. And then linked that with all of the different mobile phones in the world with apps and stuff so that they could track and locate all of the different evolved around the world and identify their abilities remotely. Which is cool and spectacularly terrifying. It, ter- it is really terrifying. Because to, th- to be honest, something like that could not be that far away. Yeah. Yeah, especially the, how far the government's going. Yeah, leaving that alone. Moving yeah. right along. Well... <laughs> Do you think of how... No, I was meaning more on the... How... Our... Yeah, how... Our text going. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dragon, it's okay to use your phone. It won't bite mm. you, but it will send anything and everything you say to the <laughs> NSA. Speaking of which, NSA, since you're probably listening into this, I just wanted to say hi, and please tell Pete, happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> And if, you, if there is a Pete at the NSA, and it is his birthday, well, that's more coincidence than anything else. I'm not listening in to you in return. I swear. Anyway. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I like the, the I, I like this writing for what they're doing with heroes. I yeah. think it's really nicely done. It's interesting. It, it is a bit on the slow side. True. Heroes was has always been on the slow side. Slow side, yeah. So... Has been that always that quick flashy sort of stuff yeah it's always had that slow build up to a big finale exactly okay now let's roll on to the main event actually no let's jump back to arrow really really quickly at the end of the first episode 
Oh, good. Yes, this. Yeah, I, I wanted to save this talk. Um, if you, like, it doesn't necessarily ruin the episode, but it is one of those moments that you may not want sort of spoiled. Spoiled. But, so if you do plan on watching Arrow and you don't want the last ten minutes or so spoiled, I suggest you mute us for about five minutes. By then, we should be on to Doctor Who. So. <laughs> so anyway, so you've been warned. Yep, you've been warned. You've had, you've had your chance. Um, so, end of Arrow. The first episode of Arrow. They've sort of got Oliver back to being part of the team. He does a live broadcast using the emergency broadcast channel and announces himself as Green Arrow, the new hope for the city as opposed to the new blight, the old blight on the city. And then it fast forwards six months. And we're at a funeral, specifically a gravesite. We don't see the name on the gravestone. But Barry's there, and Oliver's there, and that's it. Yeah, it, it implies it's Felicity. Yeah, it very heavily implies that it's Felicity. Half dream. Although I could, see, I could see a twist. I could see a twist and see it being Thea as well. Yeah. We um, hope not. It's sort of weird. If it was anyone other than Felicity, I expect Felicity to be there with him. That's why. Because, yeah, because Felicity's not there. Yeah. But it could also be um, something to do with Legends of Tomorrow. That too. Just like, um, just for curiosity, and I, it's only because I missed it. Who was the guy at the end of Flash? The turn. Oh, out? that's Jay Garrick. He is. The Reverse Flash. No, 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 no. Jay okay. Garrick is the Flash from Earth Two. Oh. He, he, in the comics, he's the very first Flash. He was the original in the comics before Barry was written. Oh, yeah. Ah, okay. Sweet. He, he was the original Scarlet Speedster. Nice. Yeah, because it went... Although, they, although in Earth 2, they, they call him the Crimson Comet. Yeah, same difference. But yeah, he's the, he's the original Speedster. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it went Gareth, then Barry, then Wally, then Impulse. Yeah. No, I technically wouldn't go impulse for the fact that he went back through time. No, no, impulse still counts. It's still, go- it's still impulse comes into it eventually. Yeah, but I mean, it doesn't go the fourth speed stuff. For the fact is, he went back in time. His par- um, his father or mother, is the speedster before that. Yeah. Anyway, but yeah, no, that's the original. He, um, Jake Eric is the original Flash, and there is some news with that. That, but I'll talk about that tomorrow. Yeah, we'll we'll do that when we cover the fantasy podcast. Um, so now we move on to the main event, Doctor Who. <laughs> My so sister's it. loving it. Airlock. My sister is loving it. Anyway, yes, Amy, you were saying your sister loves it. Yeah, my sister is loving Doctor Who. Yeah. She just doesn't like the fact is they've got rid of the screwdriver. Yeah, there's an online petition to bring it back. Don't worry, it's glad it's gone. (laughs) Get rid of the King Sonic. I'm sick of the. Oh, we have a problem. Up, there's a solution. No I worry, Moffat... the fact is they've done the sunglasses. Well, Moffat already <laughs> said that it's going to come back by the end of the season, so... I know it's coming back, but... And Sonic sunglasses, seriously, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like... Well, here's the thing. Each Doctor has their own cliché thing. Yeah, I know, and his and is it's... sort of... Um... No, yeah, nine had leather jackets, ten was um, trench coat. Yeah. Eleven was bow tie and fez, and this is his gimmick. Yeah. <laughs> it's the sunglasses. Yeah. It's just to cover the eyebrows. Oh. <laughs> Ouch. So, anyway, first two ep- first two full stories are out, all four episodes. Um, I'll start with the first one. The first, the two oh. parts of the season start with the Daleks. That was um, I was so not expecting how they started. Yeah. That... Backstory backstory into Davros and Descaro was amazing. Yeah, and hand mines. The Ugh. hell are hand mines? <laughs> Terrifying. <laughs> it's just hands sticking up out of the ground. It's like, how is that a thing? <laughs> I, I, 
It's because they pull you underground. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, you get yeah. suffocated. So we, we covered a little bit last last podcast, so we're going to sort of move on to the second half of that episode, which is what I wanted to cover this week, but I forgot because technical issues. Anyway. Um, so Clara and the Dalek was so cool. Oh, was, yeah. That was throwback to Asylum. Oh, yeah. That was... That was really, really good. Like, admittedly, I am still honestly over Clara as the companion. And the thing that made episode one and two so great wasn't the Doctor. It wasn't Clara. Without a shadow of a doubt, it was Missy. No Um, offense or buts. Missy made episode one spectacular. (laughs) Missy's just funny. Like, Michelle Gomez is an amazing actress. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Seriously... I would love to see her and River Song and Captain Jack as their own TV series. Well, River is coming back for the Christmas special, so... Yeah, which is going to be awesome! <laughs> I'm going to love to see how Peter and Alex were, oh, <laughs> how yeah. that's going to go. Uh, grumpy old Doctor and Spunky Alex. So that'll be spectacular. Um, and then we moved on to the second episode with the ghosts. That was really, really interesting. Really, really well done. I was afraid that Missy made the first couple episodes really good. I was afraid without her, it we might go backwards a little bit. And we sort of did, but we made up the difference. Yeah. We really did. And it was really good story writing. And the, de- the, the deaf person, that was really cool. Oh, yeah, the, the deaf actress, yeah. Yeah. Because the actress is actually deaf in real life, so that was... Really cool. Really, really interesting way of telling a story, actually. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> the, uh, the electric guitar Doctor Who theme. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I oh. love that. That was pretty cool. Oh, yeah, the, uh, the Fisher King. Yeah, the Fisher King. That by, was... By, um, oh, what's his face from... The, well, no, 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 the, he only did the scream. Yeah. Was, um, the scream was done by the main singer from Slipknot. That's it, yeah. But the costume looked amazing. Oh yeah, it reminded me of the Scarens from Farscape. Scarens? I think yeah. that. I don't know, but um, no, it was something else. It, you know what it reminded me of? Yeah. It, um, I can't remember the alien, but um, uh, Tenet's first Christmas special, the one where he, um just after uh, just after nine regenerates into ten, and the aliens and that it, rem- it reminded me of that. I was thinking, from the side profile, it looks very familiar to something else, but I can't place it. I was thinking, it's sort of, similar sort of pose to the Scarens from Farscape, but not. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, the Fisher King was spectacular. That, as I said, the, the, the villains this year, like, the aliens this year, really a nice step up. Yeah. And they really need to do it, and they delivered. Um, no, 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 no. Um, Christmas special when, um, when, um, 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 uh, what was first Doctor Christopher? Yeah, yeah she, he was with Rose and he was in orbit above the planet and he had the sword fight and lost his hand. Correct. Yeah, yeah. The first, the first Christmas special. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then after everything's said and done, they blow up the alien ship anyway. Does that really surprise you, though? No. <laughs> so. Yeah. But the question, up, I see a ship, let's blow it up. That's a really inter- interesting question raised in the, the second episode. Because right now they've both been two-parters. I don't know if they're all going to be two-parters. I'm not, awesome. I, th- I think they are going to be all two-parters. Because uh, I think five and six is a two-parter as well. Because I know Maisie is in both of them. Yeah. So, um, so oh, what was I going to say? The oh, question? Oh yeah, the, the Beethoven question. <laughs> yeah, you, who wrote if, the music? If you love if you love Beethoven, so you've got a time machine, you go back in time to meet Beethoven, but after you find all of his supposed friends and family and everything, none of them know who Beethoven is, none of them know of his music or anything like that. You happen you to have a copy of the music on you. So you publish it under Beethoven's name and it blows up. Who originally wrote the music? <laughs> it's such a it's such a cool question, isn't it? So, um, and that's a question that, that just randomly they the doctor poses that question at the very beginning of the episode, and it's 
a massive sort of tip of the hat to what's coming later. But at the same time, you don't really sort of get it until it actually happens. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, it's this very, very sort of peculiar scene at the beginning. It's like, what the hell? And then he pulls out the fucking electric guitar and just starts riffing, and then it cuts to an electric guitar version of the intro, and it's like, what Which the I hell? think was cool. I really like that. Oh, yeah. It reminded me of one of the guys on YouTube does meets metal songs, where he yeah. makes a normal non-metal song and then sort of... Makes, makes it metal. It, yeah, makes I know metal. And it's and he does a really good job. Yeah, I like um, because Peter Capaldi has a rock band. Like I like that they're letting him use the guitar. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, him on the guitar is spectacular. Oh. Him on the guitar in the tank. Him on the. Guitar. Are we just going to see the guitar all season? <laughs> yeah. Probably. That, that could be. His, I, I'm now that could actually to, be his thing. I'm uh, now leaning towards that the, the guitar is his thing, not the glasses. Yeah. Well, I could well, I could see the conventions now. You're gonna see doctors with guitars. The, <laughs> this doctor walking around with a random electric guitar, and it and from now on oh, it'll no. be it'll be signed by um, Mozart just because. No, 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 no! I just saw something worse. Oh God! Rock band with twelve with the twelve doctors. They, and then it's like it's a whole group of twelve Doctor cosplays. And they go up on stage and then they fight over who gets the electric guitar. <laughs> oh. I have a really weird mind. Yeah, you do. But I can see that being a thing. Oh yeah, that'd be great. But yeah, no. I, I, going Remember back. Remember to... that for for Supernova, and we'll <laughs> we'll, we'll try and make that happen somewhere. Yeah, no. uh. What then? Fighting over a guitar. <laughs> um. So, the, the Fisher King story is actually really, really well done. At the end of episode one, you're not exactly sure what the hell is going on. You just know that there's ghosts, and then just randomly out of the blue, the Doctor turns up as a ghost, and it's like... Now, I have a question with that. How? Yeah. Well, I guess we'll know. It was shown how. Yeah, it was it's a hologram. It was a hologram, but before it, everyone was, it was announced it was a hologram, it was like, but shouldn't it be regenerated? Yeah, pretty much. Well, th- don't but, they have only a limited amount they, of regens? Yeah. yeah, he's got reset. Yeah. Uh, How do you get reset? Christmas uh, special. Yeah, Chris, Christmas special. Um, when he first rege- when he regenerated, um, he found the last crack in time, the same shape of crack that was in Amy's bedroom. Room. Yep. Um, and he found that Gallifrey was on the other side of said crack, and when um, what was it? Bloody T- Clara begged them for help through the crack. They sent a massive amount of regeneration energy through to him, and effectively reset him. No, no, he he was reset. He, he was, was reset. reset. It was a full reset. It was a full reset. He's got all his Ooh. regenerations back, back to scratch. Um, so yeah, and so he regenerated into the current one. Although he, uh, although he has used, although he used that um, some of that energy with Davros, so I'm guessing he's probably down a few. Yeah, he'd be down maybe one. Maybe one. Remember, Tenet burnt through so much of his energy randomly. So <laughs> Tenet just went through so much. Yeah. So yeah. Um, yeah. And I'm definitely looking forward to the rest of this season. It looks like there's going to be a really cool, really cool set. Of it's interesting because. The synopsis for the next two-parter yep. is really interesting because um, it says that the Doctor um, comes across a face he's seen before. Yeah. And it's all leaning towards Maisie Williams' character. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm definitely curious to see what she's... What she's and there's doing. a few little... There's a few couple of rumours with that. Yeah. One of them is that it's, the, is that it's his granddaughter. That'd be cool. The other one, and I, I don't really believe this one, is su- it's a young, it's a really young river. Yeah, it, uh, I, I the don't the so. grand draw I'm leaning towards, or, or 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 something else. Well, it could be the daughter from Tenant's era. That too, it could be it could be the daughter. Yeah. Um. There's a few couple of things flying about, but we'll find out eventually. Yeah. So yeah, anyway, back back to the ghost under the water. Um, so at the end of the, the the first episode, the Doctor rocks up as a ghost, and at the end of the second episode, he explains it that he Mozarted the whole thing. He made a hologram of the ghost 
that told the doctor exactly what the doctor needed to know in order to um, defeat the Fisher King. Um, and then he would go back in time, well, forwards in time to create the hologram and set it to go off again. So effectively, the hologram told him how to create the hologram. So who originally came up with the idea of the hologram? Right. Yeah. Well, we are talking about the Doctor here, so... Yeah, I'm just going to rule it as wibbly-wobbly. <laughs> it's easy enough to wibbly do that. Wibbly-wobbly-timey-wimey. Yeah. 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 So. I think it's safer that way. Oh, yes. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So, so, a lot of other shows have just come back as well. Yeah, everything's everything's coming back. It's that, t- it's that time of year. We've got Rebels coming back uh, next week, you said? No, this week. This week? Well, we'll this talk, this we'll, Wednesday. We'll talk. We'll, we'll probably cover it in 53 then. Yeah, Walking Dead just started back tonight. Wow. Dead. Um, <laughs> oh, the Star Wars beta. How could I forget about the Star Wars beta? Yeah, I was going to bring this up. Yeah. Just... So, over, so over the weekend, um, DICE released um, a Star Wars Battlefront open beta for all platforms, PC, PlayStation, uh, PS4, and Xbox One. How does that work? Um, so they're going to the way that they're going to do this is it's going you're only going to play against people on what device you use, so PC against PC, PS4 versus PS4, and Xbox One versus Xbox One. Yeah, exactly. And with my computer down, I haven't had a chance to get it, so oh well. I got it, and it is amazingly stunning. It yeah. is beautiful. It is some of the funniest beta bugs are coming out of it. <laughs> uh, I saw a... <laughs> like the true to life stormtrooper. <laughs> no, 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 the, of a barn. no, no. The fav- my favorite one has to be um, Luke Skywalker getting trampled by an AT-AT. <laughs> that was hilarious. Oh. Also, um, I was kind of a douche, and I was kind of um, Alawak barring everyone in Die Fighters. <laughs> Basically, cool. I, I went up and dive bomb. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've seen some pretty funny video. Like one of the guys, um, one of the because I I did watch some let's plays of it, so I sort of had an idea of what it was like for this. And one of the guys I was watching had the X wing. Oh, he was just. But he, he, when he first unlocked the X wing and he was trying to bring it in, he got killed. By, yeah, and then he finally brings it in and Game buzzes over. around. Shoots shoots at a tie for a little fighter for a little bit. Does some shows off some pretty badass air combat to be honest. Looks oh yeah, really really good. They're actually and um crashed. The good thing actually with the flying, and, and I was worried with this back when um it dropped at E three when they um had gameplay at E three is a lot of people said the flying was stiff. Yeah, it's really nice and smooth actually, yeah. and there's a few cool things you can do depending on what vehicle you have. Um, the X wings and A wings have a shield you can activate, as well as um, uh, pro- um, proton torpedoes. Yeah. The Tie Fighters also have um, um, torpedoes, but they instead of the shield, they get a speed boost. Yeah. So really, uh, really cool, different, um, different, yeah. uh, differentiating things. Yeah, for the, each sort of the, 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 the pros and the cons of the. The different things. Yeah, and the sounds. The sounds are all yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> I still Poor think dragon. The, the, the accuracy to life um, Stormtrooper thing is pretty funny. Yeah. It's just Stormtrooper <laughs> shooting at a guy and missing 90% yeah. of the to, shots. Now, to be fair, this is a bot, so this isn't yeah. an actual person. I can say that because I was using... um. Because I was because you play as Imperials and Stormtroopers and you use the guns and stuff. Because yeah. you can unlock different guns and stuff. Yeah. But yeah, and, and the, the 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 point is the box is just actually, as accurate a, as in the movie. It's a, you know, it's actually really funny. The stormtrooper's boss is actually this actually has the most damage. <laughs> <laughs> little in a little joke. Oh, it's like the meme that's floating yeah. around, and it's the the one stormtrooper that manages to shoot Leia, the only stormtrooper to ever actually hit a target. <laughs> shows a storm tro- this this massive stormtrooper party going. We actually hit something. <laughs> But no, um, I'm really looking forward to November 19th when the full game comes out. Yeah. 
definitely. definitely. Day before my birthday. So, well, I'm looking forward to Halo because Halo's only a couple of weeks away as well. Halo yep, 5, Halo so. is, is is 27th. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. And I know that because I'm getting the um the Xbox One bundle. You are excellent. I'll have to play some multiplayer with you. Yeah, yeah. Gonna be awesome. Okay, Dragon, you're officially banned from the podcast. Halo does not suck. Wow, get the hell out. <laughs> no. I can't lean over because I yanked on Get the, the hell out or I'm using my new lightsaber. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so Stuart, Two-year-old. Stuart got his lightsaber. Yeah. I at least fi- that's what okay, he calls okay. it. I'm an RPG person as well, but there are a few shooters I'll play. Yeah. Hello, Battlefront of Doom. Yeah. <laughs> See, I'm not an RPG person. I'm, I love RPGs. But um, I play Ark, and Ark is spectacular. That's, yeah. that, that's as close to an RPG as I get. Yeah, I love traditional RPG. I can go into that a whole other time. Oh, that's... yeah. So, I can't talk. So, so, Stuart, do you have any news? Yes, I do. A, hell, a whole crap ton of news. Oh, yeah. Well, you've got like fifteen minutes, so yeah. There's a lot to ca- there's a lot to cover. I know. So, so so let's kick off with Flash. Oh yeah. So a couple of trailers dropped um last week after the first episode. There's a really cool um one that shows um Jay Garrick training um Barry to use his powers, and he can throw his Speed Force lightning. Ooh. Shocking. Oh yeah. Who would win, him or the Emperor? Oh, Emperor for sure. <laughs> Sorry, Barry. <laughs> but yeah, and then uh, keeping along with Flash, we are getting a new Firestorm. Ooh. How are how we going to get a new... How are they doing that? Uh, so, uh, there's a synopsis for this. Uh, the episode is called The Fury of Firestorm. And so Barry and the team are looking for another Firestorm match for Dr. Stein, because Dr. Stein's still there. Yeah. Um, the team meet um, uh, uh, Jay, um, Jay Jackson, who's going to be in Legends of Tomorrow. So he's going to be the uh, other half of um, Firestorm, which is more traditional to the comics. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Um, there's a lot more other um, Flash news as well. I, I, I know we were meant to save it for tomorrow, but I have to announce this one. Yep. Mark Hamill confirmed to return as Trickster for Season 2. Yeah, that's going to be awesome. Yay! Yeah. And the Daredevil trailer leaked. If you haven't seen it, yeah. watch it before it's gone. i seen it. That looks amazing. Once oh, again, yeah. just Netflix and Marvel and... I especially like I love Punisher and everything is going to be amazing. Oh yeah, definitely looking forward to that. Yeah, I'm really bad at keeping secrets. Yeah, yeah. It's New York yeah. Comic Con. You can't switch off all the phones at New York Comic Con. Comic Con, it's yeah, literal impossibility. And if you do switch off all the phones, there are still people with glasses with cameras in them, pens with cameras in them, God knows what else with cameras in them. There is no way to stop it from not leaking. But yeah, um, what else is there? There's a whole bunch of other news. It's, there's, like, so much news coming over. As I said, um, uh, uh, um, oh, that's right. Let's cover Rebels. Oh, yes. A Rebels trailer dropped last week yeah. for Season 2. Which is weird, because Episode 1 came out ages ago. Yeah, it was, like, a really early release, and now everything's coming out now. And um, it reveals who Sarah Michelle Gellar's character is, actually. She is actually going to play um, the seventh sister. She is actually going to be an Inquisitor. Ooh. I find this really hilarious because her husband is the voice of Kanan. Wow! So, just, just that's going to be really funny. I hope they do. <laughs> but yeah, that's really cool. And um, the trailer actually, we actually get to see Ahsoka with her lightsabers activated. Nice. So we, and to confirm, they are not blue. They are silver. She is a grey knight. We have a canon grey knight. I am happy. Okay, for those who don't know what a grey knight is, Mister Star Wars knows everything. What is a grey knight? 
A Grey Knight is neither a Jedi nor Sith. They can use both sides of the Force. They are there to keep balance. Between, which is needed. Which, to keep balance between good and evil, basically. Fair they nice. have no affiliation to any side. Very nice. Very, very nice. So, really, really happy, because... I was a, that was the one thing when Disney did the overhaul of the EU that they were gone. Really happy that we have a, a canon one at last. Yeah. Ahsoka is a Grey Knight. Very nice. Well, she can't is decide she on the side and... No. <laughs> no. I'll just no. Fine. No. Fine. Go back to your again. corner. Okay. So, um... <laughs> so this is, um... Keeping along with, um... With, we'll go back to Arrow. Uh, the synopsis has been uh, the official synopsis for Beyond Redemption, which is the episode where uh, can, uh, Canary gets uh, um, Sarah gets um, comes what, back. What, yeah, White Canary comes back. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's an interesting thing. I still don't necessarily agree with bringing her back because she was written out for a really good reason. And bringing it back to me, sort of, it's like yeah, because she's not the because su- she's because in the in in the comics there's always um, Laurel. Yeah, and it's it's very sort of bringing it back doesn't necessarily cheapen the fact that um, what's her face killed her. Um, wow, I've totally forgotten the character's name. Speedy. Oh, Thea, 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 Speedy. Thea. Thea killed her. Um, but under the drug use of Malcolm Merlin. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, of course. She was brainwashed at the time. Um, but it sort of, yeah, to me, it sort of cheapens it a bit. It's, it's, it always feels weird when they bring a character back in, like even in like sci-fi series when they bring back a character they've killed off, and killing that character off had such a massive sort of feels moment, and then bringing them back sort of a season or two later sort of cheapens it. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, moving along to Star Wars news because there's a couple of things, interesting things. Yep. Um, at, at a part at a New York Comic Con, uh, a pre New York Comic Con party on uh, last Wednesday, Hasbro released uh, their new line of Star Wars toys for next year. Ooh, nice. And so, um, they're doing a couple of cool things. Yep. There is going to be a ha- There's going to be like some new ones, so Han and stuff. But they're going to do um. Do a um a titanium line, will feature and it features all the vehicles from all eras, including Jedi Starfire, Star Destroyer, and the Jakku Landspeeder. So every f- every vehicle from prequels to now. Nice. So that's nice. gonna that'll be really co- that's gonna be really cool for collectors. Oh yeah. Did you also, speaking of things to collect? Did you hear Mega Blocks is releasing a new set of series of sets? Yes. Uh, actually. No, actually, no, I didn't. <laughs> See, this was done on a private chat that Stuart was not involved in, so I yeah, I missed this one. He doesn't have doo It's anyway, Mega Blocks. Yeah, it's Mega it's Mega, Blocks. Mega Blocks. The same guys that have done the the Halo um, ships and vehicles and figures and stuff for a while now, and while it Mega Blocks isn't as good as Lego, I still rate it second best. Of all the different block kits, Lego is number one, but it's also ridiculously expensive. Mega Blocks is number two, and it normally costs about half as much for the same amount of stuff. And yes, the quality isn't quite there, but overall, it's as far as I'm concerned, it's just about as good. And 90% of perfect is still pretty damn close compared to say Creo, which is like one percent of perfect, and you need glue to hold it together. Yeah. Yeah. Side the point, they're doing a new. Star Trek original series ship line. Ooh. Which so far has been announced is the Constitution class Enterprise and a Klingon um crap. T S nine or something? D C nine some something like that. one of the, the standard Klingon ship from that series. And they both seem to be fairly decent size as well. They're not small. Um the only downside I can see is because of the way the pillars work on the Constitution they do tend to, the pods tend to sort of lean downwards as opposed to sit flush. Um, so I'm not exactly sure what the go with that is, but I'm sure 
I'll come up with a way to make them sit flusher. Even if they make their own, make two little independent supports each for them. Um, because yeah, I'm definitely getting them. I've got the Lego Helicarrier. I've got the UNSC Ford Unto Dawn. I've got a Star Destroyer. Don't have the Super Star Destroyer. That thing is fucking expensive as shit. <laughs> Otherwise, I would have that too. Um, it's, it's like twelve. It's like twelve hundred bucks now. Um, so I'll definitely be getting both of those. And I just wish someone other than the Best Lock would make Stargate stuff, because Best Lock Lego, the Best Lock brick things, are Cost the fortune. worst. Yeah, just... The kits are missing pieces. Who sells a kit that's missing pieces? <laughs> like, it's just... They did they did Terminator, and the, ter the Terminator stuff was crap. It barely held together. Had to glue it. They did Stargate, and they did a couple of other big series. And a couple of no-brand series. But yeah, best luck, seriously, just, just avoid it. Don't go near it. Yeah. And speaking of which, the Doctor Who was announced to have its new Lego line as well, which looks brilliant. So I'm definitely yeah, going to Yeah, the Lego that. Dimension stuff. No, no, not the Lego Dimension stuff. There's an actual official TARDIS Lego kit that is not Lego Dimensions. That's got Weeping Angels, Daleks, the Doctor... Oh, that one, yeah, no, Matt that one. Smith. Yeah. Um, it's the control one, room yeah. and the TARDIS, and I'm definitely getting that. That looks brilliant. Um, and the, the older stuff that... The older Doctor Who, le the brick stuff that's out at the moment, which isn't Lego, it's some other brand that I can't think of. It's like ABC One Two Three or something. Um, it's in all the ABC shops. That cool. stuff is pretty bad too. <laughs> <laughs> I my the, the Dalek Saucer, which I got from that, is the only thing I have made from bricks that I have grabbed in my hands and torn in half at a frustration of trying <laughs> to put it together and it falling apart. Yikes. To the point where I had to go out and get glue to fix it. Right. But <laughs> damn, it felt good smashing. So can I finish my news, or...? Yes, 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 you've got two minutes. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, there, was, there was mega blocks. Well, it's just that there's a cut. Drilling. There's one really big Star Wars news I need to really need to cover. Yep. And it is that the last... This is the last trailer for Star Wars of Force Awakens rumoured to come out October 19th next week. Very Which nice. is when tickets go for pre-order online. Very nice. So I'm going to be pulling an all-nighter next Monday because <laughs> no chance in hell I'm missing tickets. I'm missing a midnight premiere for this. Yeah, that, 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 that's definitely going to a midnight show. And if we both do the midnight show, the Tuesday morning podcast is just going to be sp full of spoilers for the, for the movie. It's just going to be just... Yeah. Tuesday? Sorry. You... I miss Friday? My... Fri yes, yes, yes. Whatever. <laughs> so we don't get it... God, we don't get it that early. I Actually, wish. what day does it come out again? 17th. Okay. December 17th, we get it. We get it a day before America. Yeah. Yeah, Friday morning. Friday the 18th of... Or if... Yeah, I'm going to be sick that day. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, last bit of Star Wars news, and this is cool. This is out of New York Comic Con. Um, a couple of new book series. One is going to focus on um, on um Obi Wan and Anakin. So um Obi Wan's years of training Anakin. Yep. Uh, another one is going to focus um um it's going to be um Force Awakens. Yep. And it's uh oh we're related with Force Awakens. It's going to be um set six years before Force Awakens. Nice. So a couple of new ones coming out, and those will be out next year. Nice. So yeah, that's us with Star Wars news. And we actually have some really interesting Gotham news. Yes. So Penguin's dad has been cast. And you're not going to guess who's going to play him. Pee Wee Herman. <laughs> who's going to... Is reprising his role. As the penguin's father, because he was actually he was actually um, um, Tucker Cobblepot um, in Tim Burton's movie Batman Returns. Huh. He was the original um, penguin's dad, so he's reprising the role for Gotham. That's pretty funny. Okay. Anyway, that's all the time we got left. We've literally got fifteen seconds, so we will catch you later. Remember, next week is the fantasy podcast. Check out facebook.com/slash/save/sci-fi and join in the conversation. Bye. At nine in the morning. Bye all.
Bye. <laughs> Bye.